Well guys, welcome back to another video. <clears throat> today we're back at the Ark. Um, I have got no clue what we're doing today, so uh, hopefully we're getting some more platforms on because that's the only thing we can do. So uh, when the rest of them get here, I'll uh, bring you back and uh, we'll get cracking. See you in a bit. Well, here we go. Bearing day today. Put new bearings in. Oh, there is four. Yeah, there is four chariots. So there should be three sections, then a chariot. That's what the number on it. I just wonder what the number is on this one. We'll have a look at it next week. Right, there's four, then a chariot. That's right. I've got a picture here to show you. Yeah, show me then. Four platforms. Right, back to doing bearings, eh? Yeah, there's only three or four. I think four to do. Four. Four. And we're not we'll putting show. platforms on. No. We'll um, no, it'd be a short day today. Yeah, because his brother won't be here because he's nimble, isn't he? He can run and jump down yeah. and all that. My yeah. boy's not here. Bank holiday weekend. I never thought about that. Oh, yeah. Shit. Well, everybody's away. Um, and I've got to get ready for Bridgewater and Barnstable. But next weekend we'll be up here, all the platforms will be on, yeah. and then me and one Scott. Day, all got the hammer, George? Hey. Hammer. Yeah, the knocking stick. Um, yeah. So then by next weekend, I've just got to do, wait for George, you know, his brother. Yeah. To have them two here with the lorry being so far out. Yeah, the yeah. boom don't reach it's that far. It's a struggle. Yeah. And we don't want to fucking. I don't want to struggle with it, because then that's when. No. The line was close, I'd be easy. Yeah, the boom would come out further then, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But we've got forever, I can use it to get underneath. Just say, bring your earplugs next time so you can listen to it. Listen to who? Your brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say nothing. This grease ain't bad. Oh, or is it? Yeah. He's a sealed bearing. I keep some of them. Mm, short video today then? Yeah. It's 105. 105. Yeah, because I don't I put a video up right, I was gonna put three of them up. I put one up, putting the platforms on, and then the other ones I thought oh fuck it, I'll stick them all together. But it come out really small, didn't it? With a black yeah. back. So I just put both of them on singly. It's the metal there, look, with a point. Yeah, should be one in there, isn't it? I got the wrong vehicle because that's in the pickup. Where's the grease bucket in? The grease bucket? Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know, Brian had it last, didn't he? It's here, yeah. Oh yeah, it's here. Oh, he's still in there. <laughs> yeah, on, we're, yeah, with water. Yeah, because when that when that guy put up, oh, can I see it? Yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, right, you can see it now. You know, he's giving the impression. Oh, I'll buy it. Yeah, that's oh, right. Has he just won the lottery? Has he? No, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. That's what I thought. If he has, get out of him. He's too young. He can't drive anything. Oh. Right. Right. What do you want? No, what do you want? The bearings is in there. When you walk in, there's a green back, thought... a green step, in a cardboard box with a new bearing. I thought you put them in the cap. No.
Well, and my mate Andy's not there, so we can't go for dinner. Well, what's wrong with him? I don't know, he could be open somewhere. No, cardboard box beyond the green step in the middle. That was another 157 quid. Just what's in there. Yeah, I don't know where they are. They're gone. But who am I? Well, if you do come across oh, them. You're joking. What? Oh. I don't know. You give me one bearing wrong. But I've got one here. And what's the rest of them like? I've just took another one out and he's alright. Well, the other bearings, when you start pulling down, you might find them. If you do, they're spare ones, aren't they? No, they're, they're in the bag, they're all in there. Oh, they're all in there, are they? They were all in there, and then when we come to it, there was none in the bag. There was there none in the. Of, there was a bag of washers. Yeah. That's gone. Oh yeah, because last week your brother was looking for him. Yeah. It's like I've fitted. When I come back with the bearings, when I come back with the bearings, I fitted them into the wheels, and what wheel was there, because there was one what was we had to have skim. Well, I had him skim, put the bearings in, and we fit him right on. So that George is going to put the nuts on now. Well, I just want to pause this a minute. This is roses. Yeah. Yeah, she used to mind the shooter all the time. And, Fre and Fred used to mind the juvenile. And then when I started working for him, I minded Juvenile and he used to sit up by a wagon having a cup of tea. Yeah, I know he was, yeah, I know. I remember when they used to open, she'd come out and have a sandwich and they would have half a sandwich each. Yeah? Yeah, we went a lot of places with David. of them George the bearing sticks over the shaft like two mil not the one against the edge the the one in from it did you get that sleeve off Matty that he cut two mil yeah, off yeah that's, that's in there all oh, right 
Yeah, yeah, they're right pissy on when you come up here. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, because you're one here. Well, <laughs> I can't be here, there, and I was always dropping drawers. Back. Yeah, I know, I, I told that, because when you run me up, you said, tell him to stay there, I'll be five minutes. Yeah. I'm not fucking staying here. I told him, I'm gone. He went. Yeah. Is that Tim Nesbitt? Yeah. Yeah. Is that? All oh, right, shut up, Jay. Watch yourself, Scott. Don't fall down there at yourself like me. This is a different colour. Lovely and windy up here today. Yeah, it is. He knows where they all are. Is that a baron in there or another colour? So you tripped the Bournemouth last week when I went then? Oh, yeah. I did one the other day and the address was right. But the name of the company was wrong. They had sold out to another company. A lot of shit in this. I'm just glad I'm taking the grease out now. Yeah. Because this has got bits of steel in it. From where bearings have gone. Well, I've had lots of people say the platform's look nice black. Yeah. But that's only just undercoat, isn't it? So. Yeah. You gonna have a shiny gloss, are you, or a matte? Yeah. No, shiny gloss. That'll look better, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's different with platforms on, doesn't it? Yeah. Aye. See, my spanners must be in the other one. I don't know where my spanners are, because I've got to tighten up the bolt. But I'm coming the week for all that.
was telling me with his, what he done once a year, he washed his bearings out. He never had a bearing go. Oh, right. Now for that one, guys. Oh, you got all grit in him. It's all grease, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because when I open this and then it goes wrong, oh look at him lot. Supposed to have done this, supposed to have done that. But when you open nobody shouldn't complain because if they watch the videos you've seen it they you've done yeah, everything. They don't look at it like that. No, anyway. I know. You know, you get people, why have you done this? Why have you done that? Does it need that? You know, there's nothing wrong with them, why change them? But you don't know what it's done in its life. I've got to go up and get some more grease. I thought you had a pallet of it left. Yeah, I have. Got tons of it. Might have more than a pallet. I haven't looked in the glory I've got up there. I must have 30 socket sets. Brand new for the army. Old fashioned, but I mean, it's in a, how can I explain it? They're in like a, a socket with a, an all tin case, what just flicks over and then you've got like eight to uh, whatever it is, 20, 19. Well, at least they still work, so. Oh yeah, it's all new. I've got two pallets of um, hand sanitizer. Oh yeah? Yeah. Right. Give me a right. I've only got two to do. Um, I was talking to my mate Bill Drake, who used to be on the Ark many years ago, and he was saying, "Remember when you drove on for Old Dewey Coupling? You've never drove an Arctic in your life." I said, "Yeah, I did actually." I said, "Yeah." I did drive for him. He'd had a heart attack. And uh, he asked my boss, because they all asked Henry James, have you got a driver? He says, Scott is learning to drive in a lorry. He said, he'll go, we'll go in there anyway to Bridgewater. So he said, uh, I'll sit in with you. I'll help you. He said, because this chippy on the back, the wheels are right on the back of the truck. When you turn the corner, the truck will come in quick. Never drove an Arctic. Never had a driving license. Nothing. And um, said, yeah, I'll drive that for you, Mr. Coupling. I'll pay you good money. I said, yeah, no problem. So. Got in. Got in the lorry, he started it, and that chippy was one of the best places on the ground to get food, without a shadow of a doubt. I used to like the potato fritters, but I got on with them all. 
and uh, off we went. A38 or wherever it was, M5. He kept, he kept opening his tin, taking the double. So, uh, gets to Bridgewater and it, you've got to go over and get in because of the rails. So he said, right, go over there, come in. Yeah, you'll get right in. I said, I don't think I will. He said, listen. He said, just go in, take your time. Anyway, I'm looking at my side, the police are guiding a bit. Where it's coming too short, I've hit three lamp buttons with tubes on the fence and uh, took them off. So I thought, oh, he's going to go mad. But he never said nothing. Right, back up, go that way and all that, back up. Yeah, I'll just chuck them out. I'll just pick them up. Anyway, goes to pick them up. There's the old bill. I said, yeah, I said, this ain't like all the big trucks. It actually on the back. Show me special, I said, you know. Yeah, all right, mate, give me a hand and put them on. I pick them up. And I thought, Stay calm, do not yeah. let this man know. Like oil luck. Let this man know you ain't got a license. Yeah. <laughs> so old Mr. Cooper has stayed in the cab. And I got I got back in, never forget it. And uh Oi, what did the policeman say? Oh god, this is showman special, I told him straight. I said, uh, this ain't like a normal lorry because of the back axle. I said and he knew it. I said, you know, I drive, oh, that's what I'm driving. Anyway, he drives in. <laughs> and uh, I drove it on a couple of times for him until he went up the line, then he boys took over. And uh, another time, after he died, his wife got hold of me through somebody else. I wasn't travelling then. Can't think what I'd done. I bet I just got out, out from uh, an holiday. Anyway, I follow that. She rings me up, can you go to this fish market? And then we're going to Birmingham. Bristol fish market. Then we're going to Birmingham. Yeah, no problem, of course I will. I'll give you 100 quid. Fuck it, no, that's a lot of money. Yeah, no problem, I'll be up. I had an old Granada, brought a driver with me. Gets in. Still no driving license, nothing. Gets in, off we go get us there. So anyway, goes over to there, George. Goes no, over, sees a puck in there. He's waiting for the hammer. Sees a few travellers, got talking to them. And then on the way back, then she went, you know, come and get me and move it on now, back to her yard. Yeah, no problem. Didn't have a clue where the yard was. I said, no, when we turn off the motorway, you come and, uh, Guide us in. Yeah, no problem. On the way back, police stops us on the motorway. I've stopped this lorry before and it was condemned. I said, nah, not this lorry, mate. I said, this is a new lorry lot. Check the number plate out. No, we recognise this trailer. I said, all that's been done, mate. I said, and the lorry was, uh, you didn't like the lorry, so they bought a new one lot. I said, you can see this ain't very old. Well, we've stopped you, we'll take you in. Fucking hell. So he says, we'll stay behind you, go down to the next roundabout, and you'll come to a lay-by. Stay in the lay-by, and we'll, we'll get the ministry to come to check it in the lay-by. So, can't say nothing, we've got in. When we're going there, she's flying past Mrs. Couplin with Berta. So uh, I'm trying to say, you know, what do I do? Then I see him on the other side of the motorway coming the other way. So if he gets to this slip road and just to stroke up, the police stop at the top of the slip road. So I've gone down the slip road, I've drove right around and got back on the motorway. Because they, they couldn't see me. So, uh, 
gets to the, gets, I knew it's by Bristol, gets to Sedgemore, gets in Sedgemore, fills it up, and uh, I've got no car with me, nothing. Can't find the driver who come with me. Can't find him, he's shitting himself because I don't think he had a driving license. My car had no insurance. <laughs> Fills it up, backs it up, and puts it in Sedgemore Services. No mobile phones. I had to then go to the phone box in the services, ring my house and said, if Mrs. Couplin rings my house, if she rings here, just tell her the keys are under the seat and I've diesel it up. And um, then I had to find out I have a itch I was too afraid of itch I. So I was talking to the bloke in the garage. Told him I was a driver, just dropping it off. He was a little bit of a enthusiast. So he said, yeah. So now the police are looking for me. And looking for the chippy. So I get the taxi home, I filled it up, that was 100 quid. And um, never seen her again. <laughs> but she run my house and said, oh, we've lost Scotty, the police was behind him. She said, yeah, it's in Sedgemore services. That's the one after Bristol coming towards the West Country. And it's in there. And then she had, she was going mad about me putting it in the house. And my wife said, remember, he always told you he had no driving license, so your insurance won't cover him nothing. He had nothing, he's a bad driver. So, uh, that was that. And they went and got a similar driver, never had a problem. And I bet them old Bill was running around every while he went down there. Where the fuck is he then? But you still got your money, oh? No, no, never ever asked for it. Never seen them for years. So you were 100 quid out of pocket More for putting diesel in? Diesel it. Yeah. I had to, oh, that was it. A taxi. This bloke in the garage told me where the taxi was, where I could get a taxi. So... That's well meant, thanks. So, um... Got this taxi. I'm stage four to my house, another 100 quid. I had a running home, get the money. The bloke was stood outside my door, he was shitting himself, thinking I was going to rob him. I never looked back because it was an experience to drive an Arctic, Arctic trailer and a miniature Arctic. Them little bedbirds off the Bury. Well that was the good old days. Young, I think I was, must have about 17, 18 then. And I drove back to Glory for Henry James because he had the train behind. No license, never drove, never had no lessons, only learnt on the fairground. Another time, with a driving, I was driving for Tommy Keyes' Brown, he used to have an old Mercedes car, because it was automatic, the blender drove it. Anyway, we were going to Birmingham, the Watery St. Mary. When we went to this fair, somebody showed the diesel, because I checked it off, but somebody took the diesel out, knowing we were going away. Anyway, got to this flyover place on a bridge, and the fucking lorry went out of diesel. And I, because I want, didn't know what I was doing, I pulled on the second lane, three o'clock in the morning, he's going, fucking get over, get over, go and sit in the next thing. I said, well, the spare diesel in five gallon drums. I said, but all the diesel was got, all the diesel is all done, ready for the journey. That's what we've done. And somebody fucking had it away that, the, the night we were going away or the night before. Yeah. No license on there going, yeah, you're all right, I'll fucking stop the traffic. Get out of the stupid. <laughs> I used to drive everywhere, I used to go up and down the country all the time, nothing. 
But that was all the joys of the fair. One more. One more wheel to do. He's done three of them. No, that's right. He said, what I will tell you, what they're all coming in for is a bit of money. So the money don't come into it. And uh, Chewing popped me up. Keen and poor chewing. Both spoke well. Did speak well. So, uh, spoke well of me. And, um, accepted me. Um, so it come to, they said, right, you know, when you come in the jaw, come in the guild, like his dad and his dad has paid into the guild, so everyone's up to date. If you come in, you should have went in when you were 21. No, 18. And so you've got a, and, and I, I think I was, 30, no, 42, something like that. So they said, so you've got to catch up from 18 to 42. So, give me a price. Oh my God. It was a lot of money, a lot of money. But, I had a lot of money. You know, it didn't mean nothing. I ain't got a lot of money. To, at that time to get in. Now anybody can get in. Um, so I said to them at the time, it was supposed to be one price and somebody come up with a bigger price. And um, I said, what could you ever give me to make me want to give you that much money? But then they, they explained be a part of the port shareholder you're in the guild because it belongs to all the members oh yeah and you'll be able to live off the port oh yeah and you'll be able to go any anywhere you want any fairground you can apply you can go so they said don't make the decision now wait 
think about it. You don't have to go in now. And then if you want to go in, so but the people who's putting you up is in the room with you and they can't advise you. And I always ask a lot of people advice. And I double check on my advice. That's just the way I am. And um, then the next month come up, they was having a meeting, and my mate come, Dean, and said, you know, what do you want to do? You, you, you're in. you just got to accept the price. So I said, yeah, fuck it. Excuse my French. Yeah, I'm going in. So, then I become a guild member. And then, after a few years, someone said, why don't you try for the committee? I said, they won't like that. <laughs> oh my God. And I said to a couple of people, because some people will say, yeah, get in there just to G it up, you know? Anyway, put my name down met some of the committee and all that who, who I knew because like, I've been on it all my life and um, talked to a couple and uh, one of them I helped, he had uh, an haunted house somebody robbed him took the bag off him, he had a broken leg took the bag off him and I'd give chase and we got him in the Midlands and they smashed him up this boy, Packy and I reminded him of that and a couple of others, I reminded them when I helped them, when their men were getting beaten up and, our, and the art boy went over and helped them out and all that through other people, because they, their boss didn't like his boss. So you did. I said, when I was going to Birmingham, in charge, and you picked me up and I helped build up. So he said, yeah, you did. He said, but the decision was made now. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in. So I agreed, went there, <laughs> put the money on that, there you go, count that. And it, it was a few grand. But everyone said, you're all mad and all that, like, what are you going to get out of it? I've got everything in life I ever wanted. There is people still now dreaming of, like, to go on and be a member of the Showman's Guild. But then, I'm, I've changed the subject a bit then because I've gone back when I was joining. Um, oh. Look at that, that was inside, a bit of an R clip. Oh yeah. See that could work its way out. We'll put the bear in it. Oh, there's another piece. See it? So yeah, I went back. Da -da. So I got him. So they're saying to me, a few years later, you'll be good on the committee. Come on. Put your name down. So I put my name down, went there. And I had a few boats, I was only like, in the first year, five boats out. And Stephen Wallins come and said, right, put your name down for next year, doing the right thing. So, I said, nah, I said, you know. He said, you're not far out. So then I went. The next year, put the name down. Went to I always went to all the meetings anyway, just to find out and learn a few things. And um, yeah, put your name. They were all saying all of them on there. Put your name down. We know you are, and you, you are good. You know, learn the rules. Yeah, I'm all the rules. So um. Put my name down, and I think I was free out to get on. 
they all come over again, shut me out, but you've got to leave the room so they can have their meeting and who you do delegate. And when I say I was pissed, I was, I was pissed right off, but I shouldn't have been because I was up in the cat, you know, I was up there. But I was young then, or younger. <laughs> and then they said, put your name down again. And then that year I didn't get on, the second time I tried out, all the mixes was coming out. They won't allow you, they're going to put him on when you're putting your name down, they'll get somebody else up thought, or, or no, because it's people who I know anyway. Yeah. Because you had all that, right, you still get it today, people will do a bit of mixing about meetings and meeting in pub before they go to a meeting, all fucking, it's all shit. So anyway. Fourth time, put the name down. I thought there ain't many in this room. It was like they used to be packed. Anyway, I think I was like the fifth highest. <laughs> Got on. And there was people coming up who, you know, shook your hand. We, you know, you know, shook your hand and all that. And I got on, and the committee came over, shook my hand, and well done. You've tried hard enough. And I am still there. I'm still on the committee. I've opened fairs as the acting vice chairman. Um, I've been to cases in London for the Western section, and it's an education thing. And it is, I've never looked back, you know. And only the other day, someone talked to me and said. You know, are you enjoying it? Yes. I said, um, I'm living the dream, really. I said, because I am not just a member of the Showman's Guild, I'm on the committee of the Western section. And uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. I help out where I can in your decisions and that. And one good thing, I don't open with, any, with anybody. You know, I'd do me pay dues and that. And, oh, I'll go with somebody now. But at the time, and people used to say, oh, I like you being on there because you're not the only to anybody. I said, well, it's not like that anyway. I said, you know, we're all independent in there. We all have our views. And somebody will bring a rule up. Well, I wouldn't have even gone down that road. Because you read the guild book, and... In our, in our section, they all read the guild book. And um, they'll have it out ready and all that. And, and they'll point a different rule and all that. And yeah, but, you know, I've had to step up with the reading and writing and all that. I've tried my best. Now I've been on there a nice few years. And when I go to a meeting, it's like it's like the first time. You know when you first go there and you yeah. really enjoy it? That's what it's like. I went, the first time I went there, as a committee man, to the first meeting, you get told things and all that, what you've got to do and how to conduct yourself and what it means in the meeting and, you know, you can't say nothing outside the meeting, there's the meeting, there's the meeting. I I was a team boy. Because <laughs> you make the <laughs> one who went in, uh, was a team boy and then somebody else said to me, no, you're not the team boy. And I was at the end of the table. The last one in is me. And you know, because I just joined, and um, and I was making the tea. I didn't mind making the tea. Nothing wrong with that. That's how it is. It's tradition. And now I've been on there long enough where people's left that I am by the top table. I've gone from down there to there. But me chairman next, isn't it? No, no, that. I wouldn't want to be chairman. A lot of responsibility, that is. Yeah. Yeah, because you've got people's businesses. You could set, you could give advice, and it might affect somebody. Right. And then you've made that decision. And it's hard. It's hard because the chairman's took a lot of stick over decisions, which, you know, I've been behind him all the way. We all have. Um, I would love to be vice chairman for one year and then 
let somebody else have it, and then I can always say, I've been vice chairman. Yeah. And you learn a little bit. I don't want to go to all the, like they have meetings all over the country, um, and cases. Well, the more experienced ones, who have been doing cases for years, that's the ones what you want doing it. But, That experience has been brilliant. And like now, I don't have an holiday. I work. I'm a workaholic. I don't spend no money. We have our own money, and then I well, like when I've gone or we've gone, the kids can have it. Anything we got. Um, the haulage has been brilliant. When we had nothing, my boy stepped right up, drove, didn't want no wages. But now he's working with another man now. And everybody who sees my boy sees work effort and all that lot is, is second to none. It's brilliant. And um, everywhere he goes, now he's, he's got, anywhere he goes, he goes into a lot of yards doing these tyres and what he's doing. And when he rings them up, Mom, we're right, yeah, kettle's on, they all like to have a yap and all that. How's your dad doing? Because with the haulage, you don't get to see anybody now. But yeah. But I wouldn't change my life, what I've done. Rode all the rides. Down here, you never seen much big ride. And then I went with Tommy Keys, then you see, you, it opened it up. You went to Birmingham with Wilson, spinning top Walter. Nobody had a spinning top Walter. He had uh, he had a spinning he had the zipper back white leg let, asked him to come down he come down for all the regattas chuck an absolute fortune but nobody I thought oh, that's a zipper so like you know I've been working on it um, and then I think they had a, a frisbee it's like a freak out but a frisbee they come onto the O. For Radio One many many years ago and um, come on the old many years ago I took an absolute fortune and they're all going yeah, look at this ride look at it look at the truck site and I'm like because I went up there and I traveled about for a few years it was like nothing to it he had a Willie Wilson had a coach but it was a, a fun house like Disney all white and my mate who worked for Jimmy Keys then, Tommy's dad, he ended up managing it and taking it around. Um, and one year, when I was with Tommy, we went and stayed in uh, A Mills, Birmingham, Willie Wilson's yard. And Tommy went and said to him, oh, you know, I, I want a winter bottle, but, you know, is there any chance of my manager? No, Tommy said, I don't have managers, no staff in my yards in the winter. Only me own when they come and do the rides up. Anyway, something happened at one of the places. I went over there, or I was there, out to out, had a fire on a set, and I turned the set off. Anyway, got to know who I was. It was at one place, like new enough for the winter. And he said, oh yeah, your man can stay, you can go in where, where the gate was, where the big gate was, you can stay there, like, by the gate. And if I need him to do any work, he can do some, you know, he can help me, painting and all that. And that's what I did. And I stayed in Willie Wilson's job. He had, he was, and, and like that, he had, everybody had Simpsons down here. He had a big Arctic trail, a metallic blue, with a metallic blue Rolls Royce to match it. And he come in one day with a 45 gallon drum and a boot, and I'm going, my God, that's a Rolls Royce lot. And he put a 45 gallon in the boot, and he, and he pulled in. And he had some chippings come. And I don't mean he had a lorry load, he must have had four lorry loads. And we had to spread them by hand. And when he got out in the morning, I said, Roy, I ain't doing all this. And no, uh, I dig a cup. And um, he said, pull your trailer out. Chipped all mine, got the trailer back, and now I stayed with that. My bit was done, and then we did the whole yard. And while I seized him, 
I do remind him, you know, because it was a long time ago. He won't, but he knew who I was now. Well, he do. He knows me now because we talk. I've done him a, a favour back along at Gloucester, took a parcel to it for him. But yeah, I would never change anything. You ever, anybody who's watching this and gets a chance to work on a ride and go around, you go all around the country. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm too old now, I'm I, I drive on or I'll tow something for somebody or if somebody has a breakdown, I'm down here. I'm there. I'm there for her, because that's, that's what we do. Like this ride, I'm hoping Blackwell, Smithy, Timmy Smith, uh, little Alan Keeler. Well, hopefully when I go to a rally, they'll all come. Hopefully. But you never know, do you? They all say they come and then they retire, but a bit black one and that, they'll all love it because it's reminiscing how yeah. years ago. Like me, I've really, I've took too much on, but I didn't have a lot of work then. Now <laughs> we work. I've got five trucks. Um, everything's loaded. Um, I'm open tonight to go to Gloucester to take someone's candy bar up. That's why I'm driving my little Christmas van. I hire that out to Tesco's at Christmas. They all laugh at me, but I guess £100 an hour. You can't beat it. Right. Now let's get in here tomorrow, mate, George. Sounds like he's having a problem with summer. It's like... We, we had that funeral with Diane, Diane Bailey. Good send off, because all showmen stick together. And there was a few more mates there, and we were reminiscing, talking about the old days, the 70s, aren't we? Oh my God, you know. And a picture come up on my memory, do you see it on the roundup? No. Yeah, okay. were you and another lad sitting yeah. on the top? Yeah, that's, that's, he's called Dwayne. And he's related to the Cappards. And Tommy had just got the roundup. And that's how trusted I was by the Keyses. Um, we went to Oldsworthy. He had a queue before he opened. And when he had to shut, he still had queues to go on it. And there's Tommy working it, Linda taking the money. And they were taking that much money because the ride was going up three or four turns back down again because that was a great deal of money then to, to pay back I suppose I don't know and what she done she got the money and she put it all she just scraped it all on the floor because they couldn't keep enough space on the counter then they called me in because we had we had Smeaton um, Smeaton John Burroughs John he writes to us Keeps making funny comments. Jono. Um, I can't think now. That's done me in, it's me age, you see, I forget people's names. Oh my god. Um John Medway. Oh yeah. You went to Diane's they, funeral. Yeah, they Because I told him about you. I was sat on the floor bagging the money up. Right? And about four four hours later, I was still counting that money, it was all over the floor everywhere. And then she, what we done, we got a bucket, scraped into the bucket, put it on the floor. You will get that now, but that's, that ride, that's what it was like at Oldsworth. We took an absolute fortune. What right, that? Another one, talk about money. I was 14, 15, and, uh, and old Charlie Bailey, you got Charlie Bailey and Diane, and they had their, their dad, Charlie Bailey. And he minded Bibbs and White Legs. Um, Dodger. And it was all silver and copper then that were taken. Yeah. I've wiped it off, George. Um, Elston Flora. Right. Fantastic fair in them days because you had the Marines, the Matlows, everybody there all day. You opened like 11 o'clock, you, you shut 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Nobody know. cared. It was oggy yeah. oggy all night. All the wives were doing it. Anyway, when he shut, he had to take the money back to the white legs in a wheelbarrow with a cloth bag with the money in in a, in a wheelbarrow and I only ever seen it once I've never seen that again but that's years ago that's what it was because like it was like two bobs and all that lot wasn't it like the roundup I think that 
that was like 50 pence a ride with a lot of 50s in change but yeah never look back I still don't now I, I reminisce all the time it's me age and you meet people like I met Jones who's had a boy work for my favorite manager called Elvis and he used to love with Harry Jones with a paratrooper and that coming down here and it was easy no argument no fighting because up there they had all the problems and uh, he used to come on white legs off and we were there and we used to like him he would pull down and then come and give us them to pull down because they was quick at their job we was quick but I mean they were quicker and um, yeah it was fantastic days I used to love it I used to get seven pound a week when I was first on it and went to the go to the uh, go to the cinema if you were shut on a Sunday go to the pictures come back you had enough then at your wages to buy egg fried rice chips and a pot of curry sauce if you were lucky and a bird on your arm <laughs> but I, I never did it for the money it was the social life and getting out and all that like in the Midlands where I used to stay at Craigley and that they would go in the pub and play, all play darts and that. Down this part, they don't do nothing like that. It was all, like, what have you got around you, you know? Um, but up there, yeah, all the travellers go in the pub, they'd have a darts match, it, you know, and it was good. I used to hitchhike once a week or once a fortnight to Plymouth and back to Birmingham. I used to sign on in Birmingham, come to Plymouth and sign on the next day. Yeah, I've done that. get back. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, and then one Jimmy day, Baxter picked me up on the way to bombing. One day, I went in the Plymouth one, the girl said, Hello, Scotty, have you got a brother in Birmingham or somebody who knows you? I said, No, I said, I've never been to Birmingham in my life. What's that all about? Well, whoever it is is signing on in your name, date of birth and all. I went, Oh my God, I never signed on there again. I stayed in Plymouth. But yeah, and now I've got my own site up the fort. Um, cheap rent um, I've got a small trailer there what I use because I don't have an holiday and my holiday is up before no my <laughs> holiday I do the paper and rubbish at Barnstable for five days oh yeah you said yeah and then as a week off goes back to work or do whatever I do and then because uh, I was a, a slow week then and then the week after is Bridgewater, and I go to Bridgewater for four days doing the rubbish. But you get paid, but you're with everybody you know, and you know, and it's really good. It's nice. It's nice atmosphere, um, and you can go and help people, and if there are problems and all that. It's like there's that much flash stuff now, and everyone's trying to get on, and the money ain't there for them to to get stuff now. So I'm very proud of James Cafford because he's yeah. James Cafford's are very good with the hands. He got yeah. some chairs, they were in a mess, completely rebuilt them out, and now it's coming now, he's he's getting you know, it looks like he's getting a few bob. And he's a young lad, started with not a lot, his dad helped him. And uh, his dad's good with his hands, very nice people. Because his Haley's dad was um, a real nice bloke. When I got in the guild he said, right. Oh, that's Bobby. Bobby, Bobby James. James. When I first got in, he said, right, get your gill butt. He said, that's, that's like the, the uh, 1985 rules and that's this rules and that you'll see it. I said, yeah, I've seen all that. And he said, right, when you make a decision, you make a decision on your decision, not what, what you think, not what anybody else thinks and all that. And if I had problems with my, I had some cases I had to bring up and he helped me with it and he said yeah you know, I'll look at this and a bylaw and I went oh yeah I never thought of the bylaw yeah he said you've got to pay for it you've got to keep it all but very very good I've learnt a lot they all look after you in there anyway you want any advice you can ask them you know you can give your opinion then they'll give you the opinion because they, they know the knowledge of other cases years ago and what happened to so I used to like Joey Cafford Oh, Joey was good. Joey, Joey. oh, fucking yapper he was. Yeah, I can remember we used to go like that. Got a bit of problem with that boy there. Oh, Joe. But Joe used to wrap the keys around the neck. Eo, have a holler, you know? <laughs> or you pinch on the back of the leg, you know? And Violet was exceptional. His, mum, his wife, Fred's mum. I went to Elston 
in, I had my own little trailer. It was a shorty one, but I had it. And I was with Tommy and that then. And um, she said, have you got electric on? Because she used to run all the electric at all the places. They had their own, their own boxes from Swev inside, uh, on the posts. No, right, but uh, you know, what have you got in there? You've got an eater, have you? I said, no, I haven't got a tally. So just got a light. Okay, you can plug on. If I see anybody plugged on to you, you're, you're off. Yeah, I know. You get nothing. Yeah. Okay, Mrs. Cafford. And everywhere we go, and um, if anybody wanted to plug on to me, I'd say, oh, you have to go and see Mrs. Cafford. You're not plugging on. And I wouldn't let them plug on. Yeah. And then at the end, you know, I think it was like, say it was two quid. You'd go there, oh, Mrs. Cafford, I've got... Listen, I asked you to go, you don't... Put your money away. I wouldn't take no money then when I used to have a, a cup, cup of tea with her and go and take her a cup of tea when she, they were open and if she wanted anything in the hour when I had an hour off I would go and see them and but yeah really nice people yeah I like the Cafford yeah especially Joey Cafford yeah yeah he was a character on his own yeah. Charlie Bailey I love Charlie Bailey because he was good he used to have the bag all right all right what's on him what's going what's the, what's the crack then or if we had anything we would go to him yeah I'll have it all I can't pay you till like we leave here because he would sell it get his bit and pay you but yeah it, and Diana you know both of them ladies Diane Bailey and Pink when their sons was away and I want traveling I would always go up there every day and see them or every other day um, same as Diane and she's just left me something now which I'm very proud of but I don't want to say too much yet because it's all a bit nitty gritty um, but yeah they treat me like them I love it hey Greece. and then a bit more that's it don't want you looking filthy, do we? No, it's going to rain now. Yeah, it is, it's going to chuck it down. I painted that. Put that in there. That can go on to there. There's only a big black cloud there. Blue sky behind it. Yeah, I think we'll get wet in that thing. I've got spare bearings for some reason. Right, let's get up there now. Yeah, we've got to work out these chariots because I was worried about that because if it's 18 platforms, is it an old platform? I don't know. Yeah, because I know four, there's four bars in the chariot, then there's three bars in the chariot. Yeah, because I watched it a few times going round yeah. and I kept stopping it. Yeah. So that's what I stopped on. There's four platforms and a chariot. So that's what we got. Yeah, but the picture I got is three chariots. Three bikes and a chariot. Yeah. On the main picture you got. Yeah, yeah. On the main... Oh, you yeah. know the main picture comes yeah. up. It's four bars and a chariot. Oh, I thought it was three. No, I'll show you there. in a minute. Yeah. Right, yeah. But when I watched the video, there's four four iron rows and a chariot. Yeah. And then it goes three iron rows and a yeah. chariot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then it goes another three iron rails yeah. and a chariot. Yeah. Yeah. So they must have an extra platform with a row of bikes. Yeah. Well, here we go. Phone call. Right. Back in a minute. Right, man. Thank you. 
no problem at all. Yeah. They were feathers. Bearings out there, just now. They want a bearing in uh, a washer inside, is that? I think I did have one with something for the back.
engine and the wheels, you put the nut on and the wheels are just still going forward. Yeah, that's what was happening with his brother last week. Yeah. He put up, when you went out, he put one on, right? Yeah. yeah. Tightened it up and yeah. then the wheel kept going like that. Yeah. Yeah. Morris in a minute, he'll know what's what. Not here, is he? Where's he to? I don't know. He got back to the Philippines, isn't he? Well, I don't know, his car's not there. His, yeah, his motor there. room's not there. Oh, of course, yeah, the motor room's gone. Yeah. Unless he's gone away for the bank holiday weekend. Yeah, he's gone Come on down. Because all what would happen, you put that cap on and That's push it back, it's in. just it, it, it it's the fucking it's bearing. Front. And then that bearing on the front is going to be hanging out. Yeah. So then the wheel's going to do that. Yeah. So that, See that the inside bearing, the inside one, when it goes on that shaft, um, is allowing all the wheel to go back for some reason. Oh, so what's happening, the two bearings are staying yeah. together on the shaft. Yeah, and the wheel's the wheel going in. going like that. Yeah. Away from it. Yeah. Right. And the wheels, the, the bearing's flat on the outside. Yeah, because you can just with, push it back on. Yeah, but with, with the bearing being where it should do, and it is on the inside, and we've got the piece tight in the middle, then That's what's happening. What you're doing is you're the whole wheel is going you're over. This bit here, yeah. The of it's going like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we haven't found any washers what will go over that shaft to go at the back of the wheel. You couldn't put washers on the inside. No. No, because that'll chew because up. Because when you because when you put it on and tighten it, it's to the end of the shaft. Yeah. It don't make sense. No. Right guys, that's it for this one. We can't do no more now. Yeah, because you put the uh, wheels on and then keep sliding back and forward. So we're going to have to wait till next week or tomorrow or during the week or something like that. So I'll catch you later, peeps. I'll show you. If anything happens, I'll let you know. <laughs>